there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Alright, plentiful hombres. Um, you might notice that everything is stupidly better than it was last yeah, time. Yeah, you, you've it's, had a bit of a bedroom upgrade. Is it? Well, I, to, I wish it was my bedroom. Like, what this is, is this is a studio that I kind of obsessioned out of. It's my main studio, um, Alien Sounds. Bland and studio doing a lot of good work for a lot of local bands and some really massive international bands as well. And um, so if you're ever interested in getting some time in an awesome studio, it's where I'm currently recording my EP. Go down in the description. There'll be a link to um, to the official site. Absolutely awesome place. Um, so yeah, that's why we're kind of here. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move on with the tips kind of section. And with this, we've kind of up to now we've covered kind of chords. We've covered uh, we haven't covered any scales yet, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we play a major pentatonic and a minor pentatonic anywhere on the fretboard. Because I think and, it's pretty fair to say that pentatonic scale is probably the first one most people learn. Oh isn't yeah, it? and it should be. It's instant music. Oh, in it, it's you know? the ultimate scale in the universe. And it's the mighty sword of Dobber. That's what the um, <laughs> that's what the <laughs> the pentatonic is for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at A minor pentatonic. With, lo with lots of vibrato. With lots of vibrato and screechy picky action. And then we're going to look at the A major pentatonic. Which, if you are clever and you've got a keen eye, like the Bibster, you will have noticed that it's exactly the same bleeding scale. Yeah. Just moving it. Move it down. Easiest way to move it down is to get ourselves in a situation where we are playing the second note of the first scale, minor scale. And then we slide that down to where the first note lives. And then we play our scale from there. And that gives us an A major pentatonic. Right, now that might be all super groovy if every single chord or bass note that anyone plays lives on the E string. Because you can find a starting point for major or minor. But it ain't so great if you're up in the dusties and the, the root note doesn't live on the top string. For example... A is now on the 12th fret, so can I, is that A minor? No it's not, it's E minor now, it's because my bass note's on the top string, so what do I do? Do I learn a whole raft of new scale shapes? No, what I do is I play exactly the same position, but I play it from that root note. Difficulty being, we have a thing we have a thing called a B string, and the B string means that every note moves up a semitone, up a semitone, not down a semitone, up a semitone. So if our scale would normally live, we would move it. Does that make sense? Hope so. So let's look at what we do now with the A note on our A string. We're gonna go with exactly the same scale keeping in mind that the B string is going to move up slightly. So that's bland and now we know that it's exactly the same scale on a different starting point. For the same example, A major. that weird mess up. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the formula for that for that deal really to make it a little bit easier to remember that shape. Now in a minor pentatonic what we start off with is a semitone and a whole tone so we've got a, a two fret gap in between our fingers and that is followed by three whole tones or what I like to call is one big three small. Once we've used our three smalls up, we've only got the bigs left. Two bigs. E and E are exactly the same. Whatever you get on the top, you're going to get on the bottom. So now we've got one big, followed by three small, followed by two big, which suggests that the two bigs always glue to each other. They're always next to each other. 
So now let's look at that in a totally bizarre A position and see if we can actually build up a whole cage pattern. So we're going to find the A on the D string and we're going to start that pattern again. So we've got one big followed by three small. Now I'm going to build backwards from the scale. Big ones glued together. We've used our two big ups, we've only got a small one left. So that whole cage pattern now in A minor looks like this. So we can do that anywhere on the fretboard in any key, in major or minor. All we do is for the major, we drop it back to the three frets or whatever, or basically note two becomes note one, and you start your scale there to make it major. Any root note, you start from note one, and it'll look exactly the same as it always does. One big followed by three small. Once you've used your smalls, you can only get, you've only got your big ones left. So you can also build backwards on your scale as well. Right, if that makes sense, blinded if it doesn't then it's a little bit jarring leave us a comment and i'll do a video response just to make sure this is really super clear uh, also later on in the series we're going to be looking at giving you the whole um, cage pattern approach to pentatonic playing but i kind of like the fact that you only really have to remember this one scale and you should be able to play all the groups and um, from any root note really so hope you enjoyed that guys and um, stay in touch if you have a little wander over the frets, you will see some of the other lessons that are available to you in this series. Um, playing chords, playing some voicings, um, growing parsnips, um, eating limes, talking like Bane. Loads of stuff, man. Check it out. Play us out, Mr. G. Play us out with some nice... Stay in a pentatonic. We're going to stay in a pentatonic, so I'm going to choose E pentatonic and I'm going to maybe move it around a little bit. That's officially the key of blues. It's, it's officially the key of blues, eh? Yeah. Nice, well, let's do that then.